What a unit. That's called a dialed engine right there, folks. Howdy, my friends, and welcome to the channel today. I'm Luke, Thunderhead 289, here on YouTube. Today, we're sitting in the 74 Maverick. It's got a 302 and a four speed. And right now, it has a lawnmower carb under the hood. Now, a lot of folks have been asking about gas mileage and everything. Now, that's not the original reason I did this. Honestly, I did it for the absurdity, not necessarily the practicality. But ironically, it's turned out to be pretty darn practical. And so today, we're going to hit the road and see just what type of fuel economy we can get. I have some theories that we'll go through when we're going down the road as to why I think this has the potential to do better. It's much more... There's much more to it than like, you know, oh, if you just put a block behind your throttle, it's the same difference. No, I don't think it is, but today we're gonna find out. So with that, let's hit the road and uh, <laughs> just see what happens. We might end up on the side of the road. I don't know. Should be entertaining either way. someone else do this I wouldn't believe it either because uh, you know like I've been saying through this whole project it's kind of surprising me also all right so here we are getting on the interstate that are going to think this old rattle trap automobile is a piece of garbage, which it is. All right. Here we go. Get it stopped. Oh, I just ran over a board with a nail in it. That might stop us in our tracks. Now, a lot of you guys asked in the last video how I'm controlling air fuel ratio on this car, the car being an otherwise static metering device, you know, and then you can see on my app that I have variable control based on engine feedback parameters um, that I can trim that air fuel ratio. How am I doing this? And it's so simple, it'll actually make you mad. It's nothing more than a controlled vacuum leak. Since we know the lawnmower carb is going to try and be rich, you know, basically we can proportionally adjust our vacuum leak we're tapped in right here to allow in more air based on a target deviation from what we're seeing in real time on the wideband versus what we want to be at so you know if it's at 12 and we want to be at 14 it's going to lean it out until it's at 14 you know so that's kind of the simplified version. It's also reading in vacuum on here. So, you know, based on load scenarios, it can trim the air fuel ratio differently. Now I've already moved on to a new design because honestly, I'm just kind of entertained by the whole thing. And then I got smart and was like, wait a second, 
I got a 3D printer. I don't have to machine this big, ugly valve in here. So, you know, we have our valve body all 3D printed. There's our Chevy idle air control valve. Again, you know, very simple. And now it's all contained in one small package. So that's for later. For now, this is working good. And we're going to hit the road and just see how much we can get out of this lawnmower carburetor with all this adaptive control. And, uh, you know, fingers crossed, it's seeming to do much better than I thought it would. Now, the first thing I want to mention about this car is that, yeah, it's just so annoying how well that lawnmower car fires up in here. But I want to mention that this car is in no means set up as an ideal scenario for fuel economy. I mean, I did my alignment with a string, okay? So, you know, that's pretty sub-ideal for fuel economy in and of itself. Not to mention, big carbureted V8. It's a four-speed without an overdrive, you know. It's about as aerodynamic as a brick. And so, you know, I don't know. We'll just see what it does. It drives so well, though. Just comes right off a stop, no problem. down the road here and get to the interstate and we'll hop on hit the road and uh, just see what type of economy we can eke out of this thing I forgot the fabled on-ramp test here Backup carburetor or anything, so 
I really hope it holds together. I assume it will. I've been driving it for about a week without any issues, but you know, it's like the cardinal sin of automotive. If you don't have tools or any backup, anything, that's the time you're gonna break down. If you have tools, you never break down. So cross our fingers and hope fortune is with us today. This whole thing's going so well, I'm like borderline kind of bored. It's just like driving a normal car to work. All right, so I got a long drive ahead of me. Why don't we just jump into the science as to why I believe this will probably get good gas mileage and honestly, why it's looking like it is actually getting pretty good gas mileage. It's not what you would think. Now some theories as to why this mower carb on a big V8 is getting better gas mileage. And the biggest argument people say about this whole scenario is that basically the lawnmower carb is the same as zip tying a block to the back of your gas pedal. You're just giving it more throttle. And I'm going to have to disagree with you yet again. There's a lot more to this scenario than that. Now it is true that it takes X horsepower, you know, to go X mile per hour. And it takes X fuel to get to that horsepower that we need. But here's the kicker to this whole thing. Fuel doesn't burn in a liquid state, okay? Fuel actually burns in a gas state. And what's happening with this little tiny carburetor with its little tiny Venturi and its exponentially better vacuum signal is that this fuel is breaking up like crazy and just atomizing like none other. And so basically what it's doing is any fuel that goes through the engine in the liquid state is just wasted. You know, that's where you lose a lot of your efficiency with a combustion engine. But in this case, we're atomizing this fuel so well that we're getting the same power content out of a less amount of fuel. It's taking less fuel to get that same gas state volume that we need to make the horsepower. Now to make this even better, and mildly unintentionally, I cut a hard 90 on that intake and you can see on the um, air filter side, you know, again, there are two hard 90s going inside. What is this doing? And this is an old trick, honestly. You see a lot of folks do this. It creates a lot of turbulence through this scenario, especially this 90. Is it great for, you know, high flow, max performance stuff? No, but as far as atomizing the fuel content, it's gonna work like none other. So that's kind of my working theory to this whole thing. We've essentially accidentally made something similar to a vapor carburetor, although in this scenario, it's pretty responsive where a vapor carburetor kind of has trouble keeping up with the load. So I'm real curious today. This is kind of my background thought as to why I think this is getting better fuel economy. And I don't know, we'll, we'll see today what we get. I know it's better. It's just a question of how much better it is at this point. We're about to our destination here and our fuel has like never moved this whole time. That is really strange. I wouldn't be surprised if the fuel gauge is broken or something. This is just unnatural. All right, we made it. Here we are getting off the interstate, problem free. Something else, dude. Seemingly so practical. Return to an idle perfect. Right off a stop like nothing. It's like a normal driving car. Normal driving car that's a million degrees inside. See what type of fuel economy this thing got. Not that I care, it's already a pretty solid victory in my book. Just driving a lawnmower carburetor. Okay, here we go. Everyone's favorite gas station. Come and go.
that's it. Let's see what we did. All right, so here we go. Dink. Now we'll just see what happens. Maybe. Is that it? I have gas running out of my filler. That can't be it. Yeah, that is, that is all she wrote. And just to show you this is no BS, I mean, obviously, you're going to believe me with this type of fuel economy. I'm almost speechless. My hands are, like, shaking. It's so strange. There she is sitting in there. Our little lawnmower carb. I shut the valve off when uh, I'm parked just so the fuel doesn't boil in the line and boil into the engine. Um, hasn't been an issue, but it's just one of those things. But, uh, wow. All right, I've had to take a second to calm down as my hands are shaking so bad I can hardly hold the phone. But we went from the Marshalltown BP to the Ames come and go here. Now granted, it's all mostly highway interstate driving, but just take a look at this, 37 miles. So, if I can remember where anything is on my phone. So if we take 37 miles divided by we used, I'm just gonna round up, it was 0.8 something, 0.9. We're getting like 41 miles to the gallon in this car right now. I just don't even believe it. And I, you know, kind of got on it a few times and I flicked the gas pump because I didn't, I super didn't believe it. But I mean, it makes sense. The fuel gauge never moved the whole time we were driving down the road. See here, we'll flip. Well, obviously I filled up now, duh. But that is, ridiculous That's it we're back home safe and sound it's all in one piece i've logged probably 250 miles or so on it now that was 37 miles one way and 37 miles back so i'm not good at math but you know that's a few miles on it not a ton but you know it's been holding up good so far no issues with it no warpage it handles fuel and engine heat just fine and our little cherry on the top that probably made this thing actually as efficient as it is and kept our air fuel ratio where we wanted it to be you know i knew it would work out pretty good and i'm super curious how it'll work out on a normal four barrel you know as far as having dynamic control of a static metering carb you know i don't know you know maybe that'll play well it sure worked way better on this lawnmower carburetor thing than i ever thought it would i'm just kind of blown away with the whole deal you know what a wild ride this started out as something that I didn't even do to put on YouTube, right? I made this as an April Fool's joke, this CAD rendering of this intake with this carb to post on some different Facebook groups. And then folks just were really rude about it. And so that's how it ended up on the car, you know? And I did it for absurdity, not necessarily practicality. And then it was just surprisingly practical. And then, you know, it devolved into this thing where we made the carb tuner and, uh, you know, then we just laid down some stupid miles per gallon in this V8 car and it's exceptionally drivable for what it is. So, you know, <laughs> it's just something else. This whole series was actually gonna be about carb sizing where everyone way over carbs their engines and that's what's given carbs such a bad name. There's CFM calculators online for your engine size and the RPM that, you know, the max RPM you're probably gonna take your car to on a regular basis. And I do recommend you check those out, I'll leave a link 
below, you know, um, the all the TV shows and everything showing big dyno numbers. Yes, you can make that with a big carb, but all your drivability, your fuel economy down low, where you use your car, like wh what are you doing with your car? Like me, you're probably driving your car on the road. This 390 CFM pulls exceptionally hard to 5,500 RPM. And you know, on the street, that's all you need. And it, it lays down 26 miles to the gallon doing it in this old ratty piece of garbage, you know, nothing like the lawnmower car, but you know, that's like other, like other dimensional things going on right there right now. So I still don't even know exactly what to think about that or what to do with that info. But uh, you know, just really don't read into all the TV show stuff, properly size your carb. And I guarantee you, you'll be exceptionally happy with a carburetor. They work off vacuum. If you have good vacuum signal, they're gonna do their job very well. So moving forward, you know, um, this carb cheater, I, I guess we're gonna call it now that I got on this car. Um, I'm gonna reconfigure it so it works with a four barrel and we're just gonna see what we can do with a four barrel carburetor that's an otherwise static metering device, you know, giving it dynamic capability and see what it does with that because that thing works pretty good there. I don't know why it wouldn't work on one of these guys. So anyway, I appreciate you guys coming along with me for it. And uh, boy, I tell you, it was a lot of fun.